When you think restoration, you think classic retro systems like Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis. So imagine my surprise when an Xbox One controller comes in for restoration. This controller came into me for a simple stick drift problem, but when I got it, I realized it's in pretty rough shape. The rubber's completely off these analogs. It's absolutely filthy. The split in the shell is full of sweat, skin, and Cheetos. And like the Game Boys of old, the battery cover is missing. It even has a little bit of battery corrosion. What is this, 1995? Now I wanted to see what else was going on with it, so I plugged it into my PC to test it, and unfortunately it won't connect. So I'm just going to go in blind and do everything I can to hopefully have this completely working when I reassemble it. Getting into Xbox controllers can be a little bit difficult, especially when you compare it to PlayStation controllers, which usually pop right open. The first, and in my opinion, the worst step is to remove both of these plastic covers on both sides of the controller. These can be finicky and difficult, but once you get it off, it's relatively smooth sailing. And there's always goodies like this waiting for you once you pop them off. With those off, I used a number eight security bit, which is just a Torx bit with a little nub coming out of the middle to take out the two screws on either side. The fifth and last screw is hidden behind the label in the battery compartment. I've seen a lot of people just poke through the label to get to it. You really don't have to do that. The label easily peels back so you can take it out and then it looks like no one was ever there when you're done. And oh boy, more goodies. These thumbsticks just pull straight off, so if you ever want to replace them, you just have to remove the front shell after taking out those five screws, of course, and then you just pop them off and pop new ones on. Now, there's a few more screws in both of these boards, so I just had to change my bit to a number six security bit, which just kind of bothers me a little bit. Like, I wish it was just all size eight, but whatever, the first world problems, I guess. But I'm just saying, PlayStation controllers, they just use Phillips screws at every, just in one bit. That's all you need. Take apart the whole thing. And there's, like, way less screws than one of these things, but anyways, that's my rant for today. Let's carry on. I desoldered all the wires off of the board just for ease of moving things around and cleaning things. You really don't have to do this if you're not comfortable with soldering. However, it makes it way simpler. The headphone jack just pops straight out. There's no solder or anything like that. It's super simple. However, I've done it many times where I've reassembled it and completely forgot about it. So just keep that in the back of your head. Now the customer didn't mention any other problems other than the analog drift, so as far as I know, all these buttons are working. However, it's super, super dirty, so I'm just going to clean everything to ensure that they continue to work. The analog sticks had a bunch of dirt and hair in there. This is actually super common. Any moving part just allows dirt and debris to slowly work its way in there, and if you have pets, it's gonna be hair. Now, dirt getting into these potentiometers on the analog sticks commonly cause stick drift. However, I have a sinking suspicion that this is actually going to be due to potentiometer wear rather than dirt. And I'll show you what I mean by that in like three seconds here. Xbox and PlayStation use the exact same analog sticks and these potentiometers just kind of crack open like little tiny doors. What I'm removing here is essentially like little wheels that turn back and forth so the system knows which way you're turning the analog. And these little wheels have metal on them which rub against these pads which basically reads which way the analog is facing. Now these little pads are conductive and this is a good one. As you can see, it's fully intact. Now if we look at this one, there's some... Oh, come on, come on Richard, figure it. There you go. If you look at this one, there's some tears in it. Because the conductive pad is damaged, the signal to the little wheel here is interrupted and it's reading it as stick drift. That's it explained in the most simplistic way I could possibly think of. It's a little more complex than that. If you want more of an explanation, just let me know in the comments and I'll explain it. Anyhow, how do we fix it? The potentiometer is soldered to the board by three points, so I added flux to all three points and then added a little bit of low melt solder to each one of the legs and pads. I've personally found that this makes it way easier to take out because sometimes some of the solder that comes from the factory takes a lot of heat and it's a lot of back and forth with solder wick and solder suckers, but this just works way easier. Once that solder was on, I just ran my iron over the pins a few times just to try to really mix those two solders together. And to my surprise, the potentiometer just actually fell right out. So this method's way easier. Boy, do I wish I had a time machine because I remember I used to struggle with these so much. With that potentiometer falling out, I just used a little bit of solder wick and flux just to soak up all the solder that was in those holes. Now I can easily drop in a new one. Here's a quick comparison of the new potentiometer I'm gonna put in versus the one I just took out. As you can see, the old one here is completely chewed away. 
Now this was actually the only potentiometer that was damaged, but while they were all open, I got some isopropyl alcohol and a toothbrush and I cleaned all the hair out of them so I can ensure that hopefully none of the dirt causes any drift. Now I clicked the potentiometer back into place before soldering it because now I know for an absolute fact that it's going to be a perfect placement. I'm just basically anchoring it down once I solder these three points. Now I don't think I'm the very best at soldering, but I think this turned out half decent. I returned all the potentiometer wheels to the potentiometer conductive pad things. I'm not too sure what all these individual pieces are called. Potentiometers all back together and then I cleaned the board with isopropyl alcohol and a toothbrush and boy did it need it. It was filthy. Moving on to that connection issue. Now the USB port looks pretty good. It doesn't look damaged in any way. So I'm going to clean the crap out of it using my handy dandy toothbrush as well as some isopropyl alcohol. And then I'm just going to reflow each of these pins using a little bit of flux and heat from my soldering iron. Now, when it comes to plastics, I use 70% isopropyl alcohol and I just try to clean them up as best as I can. I cleaned all these buttons because there was goobers just kind of attached onto the side. Not sure if that was causing any issues, but if they kept building up, they eventually would. Now this conductive pad is responsible for button presses and you can literally find it in every single controller all the way from Series X to the NES. If you ever have a controller where a button's not working, clean this thing. Thankfully the exterior shell is free from any electronics or metal so I just clean them with soap and water and a toothbrush and they turned out great. They almost look like they're brand new which is exactly what I'm aiming for. Now fingers crossed that's all the repairs that this thing should have needed. I put it back together just enough to turn it on and hook it up to my computer to see if everything's working. And I'm always worried about this part that somehow I managed to break it, but no, everything's working. Let's plug it in. This time when I plugged it into my PC, it instantly started reading it. With it connected, I went to GamepadTester.com and tested all of the buttons as well as checked my analog drift. And as you can see, these are both pretty centered. Now there is a little bit of sway, but I don't really get into correcting these unless there's at least 0.1 degrees off. As I mentioned earlier, ensure that you put that headphone jack in. Trust me, you're gonna hate yourself if you don't. With the boards reinstalled into the controller, I re-soldered all of my wires back onto the main board here, so I'm ready to completely finish this controller. I purchased some new thumbsticks because there's no way I was going to put those old ones back on and these just like taking them off just pop right on. However, these new ones were a little bit stiff so I had to do some filing on the inside but it took me like three seconds. And boom, it was like I was never even here. Don't poke holes in these labels. It's stupid and it's lazy. Last but not least, I just need a new battery cover. Unfortunately, I can only find a black one. You know, it's not perfect, but it will work. Yeah, like I'm gonna do that. Uh, of course I got a white one. This is a restoration. It has to look like it's good as new. And looking at it, it's looking pretty good. Now I was able to restore this controller as well as repair another controller that this gentleman sent me all for absolutely zero dollars because of our sponsor PCBWay. PCBWay is your one-stop shop if you need PCB prototyping, CNC machining, or 3D printing. They're very quick, very affordable, and very friendly and they'll help you every step of the way if you need it. They also have an online store where you can buy PCBs that other folks have designed or you can buy cool tools like this hot plate which I'm really considering on getting or this PCB PCB holder which would make soldering an absolute breeze. There's an affiliated link in my description if you want to start your next project with PCBWay. Thanks to sponsors, I'm able to do more and more of these free repairs, which is my ultimate goal. Now, if you want to support me, you can always check out my website. I have some capacitor kits and some repair kits and things like that, as well as some merch like my Game Boy Medic shirt here or my video game restoration hat. 
Now this video is a little bit different than my other ones because it's filmed from my phone. The reason I'm doing this is because editing a video takes a lot of time on my PC because I'm usually out and about and I don't have time to sit down on my computer. So if I film it on my phone, I can edit it on my phone and then post it so you don't get a video every four months. So let me know in the comments if you like this, if you just want to wait the four months for new videos or if you want to see little videos like this. But other than that, let's save the consoles and I'll see you in the next one.